everybody. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Kelsey, and we're going to be talking all about semicolons. Um, and I'm just so excited that you've decided to take an hour of your summer um, and spend it with us learning how to do grammar on the SAT and the ACT. Um, so let's think a little bit about what part of the test we're going to be talking about. Um, on the SAT, this is called the writing and language section, and on the ACT, it's called English. Um, and both of them test pretty similar concepts um, with grammar and style and things like that. So this is how it all shakes out on both of those tests. Um, we see that on the SAT, there's four passages. Um, they each have 11 questions per passage, giving you a total of 44 questions to do in 35 minutes. So that's pretty quick, right? Um, less than a minute per question is not an ideal testing scenario. Um, and same deal with ACT, five different passages, 15 questions per section, giving you 75 questions to answer in 45 minutes. Um, and so this is an element of what makes some of these tests really challenging. Um, if some of you are learning how to drive or remember learning how to drive, um, when you have a parent in the passenger seat next to you, um, stressing you out, yelling, raising their voice, does that make your decision-making process better or worse? Do those stress hormones improve your performance? Maybe not so much. Um, and the same kind of thing is happening on this test when they're so aggressively paced that you feel like you have to rush through and you end up making some careless mistakes that you wouldn't make if you had a little bit more time to slow down and read more carefully. Um, so that's something that we're going to address today is the efficient time, efficient ways to approach some of these questions that, you know, can make you take a deep breath and slow down um, and avoid some of those more careless mistakes, particularly with respect to punctuation. We're going to be talking all about semicolons and some other types of punctuation as they're tested here um, as we go through some sample questions. Um, so the, the subject of this talk today is the semicolon that broke the law got two consecutive sentences. And I hope that this weird little phrase helps you remember some rule about the, the semicolon. So we know that this guy looks like this. It's kind of like a period with a tail. Um, and that's how you want to think about it, because the semicolon and the period by itself are actually completely interchangeable on the SAT and the ACT. Your English teachers might have an opinion about when you should use a semicolon versus when you should use a period, but on this test, you're never going to have to make that decision. They're grammatically identical. So anytime that you can use a period, you can use a semicolon. And if you can remember that, that you need two consecutive sentences in order to use a semicolon, you're going to know exactly the rules that you need to pick up these points on the SAT and the ACT. Um, so let's see how this shakes out with an actual sample question. There we go. Um, so this is a pretty classic ACT English question, um, such that there is no question. Um, it's just an underlined portion and then four things changing um, where you've got to, you know, correct the passage. Um, the way that these passages are written are often like a pretty rough first draft. There's lots of mistakes that they're tasking you to fix. Um, so when there's no question, you want to ask yourself a question. Ask yourself what's changing in the answer choices because that can clue you into what the question is testing you on. So if we ask ourselves that here, we see there's some punctuation changing. There's commas, semicolon, there's no punctuation in the original, um, and then there's the addition of some of these words. And so when you see punctuation is changing in the answers, you want to remind yourself to think about complete sentences. Can I use a period and make something a complete sentence? So let's take a look at where the punctuation is changing. It's always going to be after that word Messiah. So if we read audiences customarily stand for the hallelujah chorus of Handel's Messiah, is that a complete sentence? It is, right? If we were to put a period right there and end of the sentence, that would be a complete thought um, and we could move on to a new sentence. So before the punctuation, we have a complete idea. Let's think about what's going on after that. It is said that on one occasion, the king entered the hall at that point in the work, the audiences stood and audiences have done so since. Is that a complete idea? Starting after where the, we have the punctuation changing. It is, right? That stands completely on its own. It's not missing anything. 
Um, so anytime that we have two complete ideas, we want to use the type of punctuation that can connect those, which is either going to be a period or a semicolon. Um, and so if we go through and try to find something that's going to work with that, um, with no punctuation, we that doesn't work. We can't go with no change here. Um, we need to slow down before connecting those two complete ideas. Um, and then if we look at the two options, G and H here that have the commas, that doesn't work either. That doesn't give us the punctuation that we need to connect two complete ideas. So this is the situation where we're gonna wanna lean heavily on the semicolon. Um, and again, if the period was an option, that would work as well, but the, these test writers are never gonna ask you to choose between them. Um, so that's just one way that you might be tested on semicolon usage on the ACT. Let's try out another one. So this is not a no question question, right? We've got a question here. And these not questions, it's nice of them to capitalize it, but they're so infrequent on this test that they're pretty easy to miss. Um, so you always wanna make sure that you're not moving too fast, that you miss the fact that you're dealing with one of these not questions. Um, so we're looking for an alternative to the underlined portion in the text that would not be acceptable. So what that really means is we're looking for three that are. Um, so let's let's a, approach this really carefully and make sure that we're parking our thinking down on the page. You should always be using your writing in your test booklet as you're doing these. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I've got a lot of stuff going on up here. Um, so I don't want to keep too much going in there for any one question. So every time I have an intelligent thought, you always want to mark it down on the page in front of you. So let's go through and see what's going on here. We do see that this is testing punctuation. We've got all sorts of different punctuation items changing in between excitement and when. Um, so let's go through and find three that would be acceptable. And to do that, we're gonna evaluate whether we're dealing with complete or incomplete ideas. So up until the word excitement, it says when our answers were right, we would scream with excitement. Complete idea, no problem. And then after that complete idea, we have when the contestants were wrong, we would moan with disappointment. Another complete idea. Okay, so let's go through and see what type of punctuation we are allowed to use to connect two complete ideas. Um, we see that we have a semicolon and a period. Remember, those are interchangeable on this test. So these are both true, right? This is a little bit like that game, two truths and a lie. We're looking for all the ones that are true so we can pick the odd man out, right? One of these is not like the other. So let's compare the remaining options here. One is a comma and adding the word or, and the other one is just a comma all by itself. Um, and so we wanna think what's going to happen if we add that word or, um, that's going to work. Um, and actually we can use that to link those two complete ideas. So these three, B, C, and D, are all basically interchangeable in the eyes of the test writers. Um, so we wanna go with the odd man out, the one that doesn't work, answer A. Just the comma by itself is not okay to connect two complete thoughts, okay? So that's another way where we might see the semicolon come into play. Remember, anytime you can use a period, you can use a semicolon. Got another one on deck here. Um, not a question question. So we see, um, again, punctuation changing in the answer choices. So we see it's coming after the word school. So that's where we want to start to think about complete versus incomplete ideas before and after where we see that punctuation is changing. Um, so before we see Jonah, the valedictorian of his senior class, believes that only one factor contributed to his success in school, complete or incomplete idea. That one's complete, right? If we were to throw down a period and end the sentence there, that would be totally fine. What about after? His commitment to hard work. Not quite, right? Not quite a complete idea. So we have to consider that when we're selecting punctuation. Um, what can we eliminate right now? Well, we have to use a semicolon to connect only two complete ideas. Um, so we can eliminate no change. If you read it through originally, um, the first time you go through and you recognize right off the bat that something's wrong here, you trust your gut, cross off the no change, use the process of elimination to help you. Don't come back and reconsider an answer choice that you've already you know, decided was wrong. Do yourself a favor, park your thinking down on the page. So we know that that's not gonna work. 
Um, what else can we have eliminated this point? Um, if we add that word being, is it helpful? I see Shadna typing here. What's the rule of the colon? Aha, you're one step ahead of me. Um, we're going to learn that, actually. Um, so the rule of the colon is going to be the same as the rule of the hyphen, the single dash. And so you can think about these together um, if you want to remember what punctuation rules are equivalent. If you mesh them together, you get a little division symbol. So that's one way to remember that a colon is the same as a single dash. And the rule with a colon is that it has to come first with a complete idea. So after a complete idea, we can use these two. And after that, it can be complete or incomplete. So we can use a semicolon and a period to connect two complete ideas. But for a colon or a single dash, the only thing that matters is that the first part is a complete idea. So let's see what else we can eliminate here. Um, does it, adding the word being in there improve anything? Being his commitment to hard work? Remember, the SAT and the ACT, they want you to be as concise as you can be. Um, so throwing that word in there, it doesn't add value. It doesn't explain anything that was already unclear. So we don't want to throw in extra words unless they're helping us out at all. Um, and so let's also take a look at this semicolon. If we were to use a semicolon in B, then the second part would read, and it was his commitment to hard work. And that's not a complete idea either. Um, so that's not going to be our answer. But if we just use the colon like we see in answer C, then that works out fine. That goes along perfectly well with our colon and hyphen rules. Um, the first thing is a complete idea. Doesn't matter what comes after. Um, so we can definitely use a colon here. Um, same thing with the semicolon and the period. According to the people who write these tests, they're grammatically identical. So you're never going to be asked to choose between the two of them. So if you see a colon and a single dash and two answer choices and everything else is the same, you can eliminate both of them without thinking about it any further. Um, so that's a cool trick to keep in mind as well. OK, so we've seen our semicolon rules. We have seen our colon slash single dash rules. Let's try out another one here. Um, we've got Coach K. And he has led Duke to five NCAA basketball championships. So that's going to be the first part that we've got going on here, right? We see punctuation is changing before the word two and between championships and two. So we want to go and ask ourselves if we've got complete or incomplete ideas on both sides of the punctuation where we see it changing. Um, so what do we have before? That's going to be a complete idea. Coach K has led Duke to five NCAA basketball championships. Yep. That works. If we were to end the sentence there, no problem. All good. What about after? Two in 1991 and 1992, one in 2001, one in 2010, and one in 2015. That doesn't work on its own. That's an incomplete idea. It's missing something. We couldn't have that stand all by itself as a sentence. Um, so if we're starting with a complete idea and ending with an incomplete idea, we want to make sure that we're eliminating we're going to see other grammar rules applied along with semicolons. Shadna's asking. Um, today's mostly going to be punctuation. Um, but if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Or I'll be back next week. I'm happy to throw together something else um, if anybody has any suggestions for a topic they'd like to see. Um, OK, so we've got a complete idea and an incomplete idea. So right off the bat, we know that we can eliminate that semicolon, right? We see here, you know, if we had just looked at the answer choices and remembered our rules, these two are exactly the same. The SAT and the ACT are never going to ask you to choose. Your English teacher might, uh, but on these tests, they're the same. And in fact, so is the exclamation point, right? These are common, less commonly tested, the exclamation point and the question mark, um, but they are the same. So if we think about it, the semicolon is equal to the period, is equal to an exclamation point, is equal to a question mark. All of these can be used to connect two consecutive sentences. Um, and so you're never going to be asked to choose amongst them. 
Um, so that exclamation mark works right there. And so we're just left with no change. Um, how do we feel about choosing no change on this test? It feels a little icky sometimes, right? Because you feel like if it's underlined, something's got to be wrong with it. Um, and sometimes it can feel weird to, you know, just say that it's fine the way that it is. Anybody ever had that experience? Um, it's important to remember that the answer choices on this test are evenly distributed among A, B, C, and D. And so for the writing and language section, you can be pretty sure that no change is going to be right about 25% of the time, one in four, because those answer choices are evenly distributed. So try not to fear the no change option. It is going to be the right answer about one in four times. Um, any other questions on this one before we move on? Okay. We are cruising right along, everybody. Okay. So this next one, we see, again, not a question question. Um, punctuation is changing. We've got a semicolon. We've got a comma. We've got nothing. All coming after the word classic. Um, so that tells us what we've got to do, which is to go back and evaluate whether we're dealing with complete or incomplete thoughts. So before the word classic, what do we have? Although we think of this film as a classic, not really a, a good fit here. Um, so right off the bat, this is incomplete and it ends with a period. Can you explain why it's not on why it's not uh, answer B? Yep, um, because if we were to put a period here, then everything that comes after the period would be its own sentence. Do we have any verbs here? Two in 1991 and 1992, one in 2001, one in 2010, and one in 2015. Is this a complete idea? Can this stand on its own if we were to start the sentence with the word two? It doesn't really work, right? It's, it's missing something, it's missing a verb, it's missing what it needs to make it a complete sentence to stand on its own. Does that make sense? Any other questions on this one? Okay, well, we're good. Um, something that could make this a complete idea if there was you know, some, a verb added in there. So if you said, there were two, um, then that would start to make it its own sentence. But because those words are missing, this is all missing something um, and it can't stand on its own as a sentence. Okay. Okay, back to Walt Disney. Um, so we, we read through right away and we see automatically there's a problem because we have an incomplete thought that ends in a period and we know that we can't have that. So we wanna make sure that we're eliminating the no change. We know that we're gonna have to fix this. So let's see what's going on after the word classic. When it was released, it represented an enormous departure from the prevailing standards for animation. Is that a complete or incomplete thought? It works, right? So we want to make sure that we're eliminating any answer choices that include punctuation that we can't use to connect an incomplete and a complete idea. So that's going to be which ones, right? We want to make sure that we're eliminating the semicolon because um, we cannot use a semicolon after an incomplete idea. And then comparing what we've got left, right? The difference between these two is basically, should we have this comma or not? So let's see what's going on if we read it all the way through without the comma. Although we think of this film as a classic when it was released, so right there, you, you know, you feel like you want to take a breath. You can think of it as the breath test. If you need to pause um, when you're reading something out loud, you can trust your gut and think that you should slow down there. Although we think of this film as a classic, when it was released, it represented an enormous departure. That works. You want to take a breath there. It's a run on sentence if we don't pause. Um, so this is a situation where we just want to use a comma. Not nothing, not a semicolon. We don't want to start the sentence and start a new one. Okay. So there's lots of different ways that they can put these different elements of punctuation together and test you on them, um, but it's all testing the same fundamental rules. So you need to know which punctuation elements you can use to connect which sorts of ideas. Okay. Let's try another one together. Um, no question here. Um, we see lots of punctuation changing. We've got commas, semicolons, um, got 
a little bit of nothing over here. So let's see what's going on in this sentence. See what we need to do to fix this one, if anything, right? Just like the traffic sounds though, the noise on the bus represents people working, relaxing, and living. Okay, so we've got punctuation changing in a couple of different places um, between people and working and after the word working. Um, so let's take a closer look and see if we've got complete ideas. Um, so considering answer choice B, if we were to throw a semicolon after the word working, that wouldn't work, right? Because um, relaxing and living by itself isn't a complete idea. We couldn't use a period there, so we can't use a semicolon. Um, what about after the word people? Again, same deal. If we were to end the sentence here and start a new one, working, relaxing, and living isn't a complete idea. It's not a standalone sentence. So we cannot use a period there, cannot use a semicolon. Okay, so now let's compare what's left. This is how the process of elimination can really beautifully help lead you to the right answer on this test, because sometimes it's a lot easier to spot a wrong answer than a right one. Um, so let's compare what we've got going on with the remaining two choices. Should we slow down after people or not? Um, so let's reread it. Um, the noise on the bus represents people working, relaxing, and living. Does people fall into that list at all? Not really. Right, so this is gonna be the case where we don't wanna take a pause right there. Um, we want to go with it as it is, another element where we're gonna be going with the no change, okay? So just because you know the semicolon rules, just be careful not to be you know, sprinkling them in everywhere. You always wanna make sure that wherever you could use a semicolon, you could use a period, okay? Let's try another one. Um, no question here, we see punctuation changing. We don't see punctuation changing, do we? Um, we see words changing and one of them gets a comma, one doesn't. Um, so let's see how the change of these words is actually gonna be impacting the punctuation that we wanna use. Let's see what's going on here. People watching is one of my favorite things to do. I like listening even better. So, Right away, we can eliminate no change because we have two complete thoughts. People watching is one of my favorite things to do. We could end the sentence right there. I like listening even better. That's good too. Two complete ideas, we can't separate them by a comma. But if we look at the answer choices, we have to have a comma there. So we need to consider which of these words is actually going to be OK to use in between two complete ideas. And this is introducing another grammar rule. So we know already that a semicolon is equal to a period, is equal to question mark. Why are there no commas between released and it? Um, look on the back one. Last question. Released. Okay, um, so let's, that's a good question. So we noticed that the answer that we chose drops the comma after released. Um, and that's, that's a good question. Um, but the, the short answer is because we don't have an option to keep a comma there, right? Um, none of these answer choices keep a comma after released. So even if we might feel like we should pause there, um, that's not an option we can pick. And so if we were to read it through the way that it's written with answer choice C in there for the underlined portion, um, although we think of this film as a classic, when it was released, it represented an enormous departure from the prevailing standards. So you don't really feel like you need to take a breath there. That doesn't pass the breath test as far as I'm concerned. Um, having the slow down before when means that we can just keep going. No reason to slow down or, or pause throughout the rest of that sentence. Does that make sense? Good questions. You guys have eagle eyes. Um, and that's part of the reason why we're spending so much time looking at the answer choices. You want to try to resist the temptation as you're reading through to fix it on your own, like autocorrect does when you're typing too fast on your phone. Because um, a lot of the times, the answer that you would choose to fix whatever the problem is in the underlined portion isn't going to be an answer. Um, so you just want to pick the best one among the options that you have and not try to solve this on your own. This is a multiple choice test. You want to use that to your advantage and not do too much work on the side.
Super good question. Okay, let's go back to the people watcher, right? Okay, so we know already we've got semicolon equals period equals question mark. All these things can be used to link two complete ideas. And we're gonna add something else to this list. And that's gonna be a combination of things. It's gonna be a comma plus a fanboy word. Your fanboys. So if you're not familiar with these words, this is for and nor, but, or yet, so. All of these words in conjunction with a comma that precedes it can be used to link two complete thoughts, just like a semicolon, just like a period. So in this case, we know we have two complete ideas, so we need to pick a comma and one of these words to link them. Um, and so we see, you know, nevertheless isn't on the list, however isn't on the list, but but is. So this one's gonna have to be C. The comma plus one of those fanboys is interchangeable with the semicolon with the period. Um, so same thing applies here. You're never gonna be asked to choose if a semicolon is better than a comma plus a fanboy. So if you see two of those where everything else is the same, you know that you can eliminate them both. And that's a really satisfying thing to do. Um, so we have completed our list of punctuation that we can use um, in this case. Um, so let's try another question. We're back to Jonah. Um, we see that we've got punctuation changing and words, comma, semicolon, comma, and the words afterwards are changing. Um, so let's see what's going on here. Um, it was a top priority for Jonah to do well in school. Is that okay? Is that a complete idea? Yep. And then afterwards, that's when the words start to change. Um, but his love of friends, family, and sports were just as important. His love of friends, family, and sports were just as important. Yeah, that works. Um, kind of a complete idea. But if you're reading through, this word by kind of throws you for a loop if you read it out loud to yourself. Um, it was a top priority for Jonah to do well in school by his love of friends. Like, that's not the right conjunction here. So if it sounds off, um, let's eliminate that no change right off the bat and then go hunting for a way to fix it. Um, and so this is the same type of thing, right? We have two complete ideas. Um, and so we need to have the type of punctuation that we can use to link those. Um, so this comma in the word whereas, whereas isn't on our fanboys list, is it? Um, so that's not going to work if we throw the word whereas in there. And then comparing what we have left here, um, do these ideas agree with each other? It was a top priority for him to do well in school. His love of friends, family, and sports were just as important. We have a bit of a pivot here. So this isn't the type of relationship where we'd wanna use a colon. The better option here is to introduce kind of a contrast word with the word but. So using the comma and the fanboy word, we can link those two complete thoughts. We could use a period there and it would work fine. Um, and so that's the one we want to pick here um, to introduce that contrast between those two thoughts. Um, so we've got, we, we've been going through these questions, um, seeing how semicolons and all sorts of different punctuation can be tested on this test. And we've learned that a hyphen is the same as a single dash, which is a good thing to know, um, and all the other different sorts of punctuation that we can use to link two consecutive complete sentences. Um, and so this is actually the last question that I have ready to go today. So um, I, I hope that you guys all, you know, found some value, learned something today. Um, and I'll hang on for questions, of course. Um, but I just want to thank you so much for your attention and for coming to hang out with us. We'll be back um, same time next week, of course. Um, and it's, it's really just a pleasure to be able to share some, some tips and tricks for, for those of you that are going to be out there taking standardized tests, um, hopefully in the near future. Um, so if there's no further questions, I hope you all have a really wonderful day. Um, please, you know, always reach out to us at the Princeton Review. Um, we've got a full length practice test for you to take for free. If you've got a test coming up and you haven't taken one of those practice tests before, there's lots and lots of ways that you can start thinking about prepping for the SAT and the ACT if those are coming up in your near future.
So that's it, I guess. I'm signing off. Um, have a wonderful day, everybody. Thanks.